Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And we've heard many great preachings out of these verses. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And hopefully you'll sense what you're about to hear and examine how you are running the race. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Brother Nathan, can you pray for the message? Amen. The title of the message is Don't Stop Running. Don't Stop Running. As you know, we're running a race, and it's not a short distance. You know, they, people consider it a marathon, especially if you know that you know, you, you're, you're going to live a little bit of time, and you know it's going to be a long distance race. One thing that people tend to forget is that you are in a race. You know, after you got saved, after you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it has become your personal race. However, in order to run this race, you need to get saved. Too many people think that they're saved, and too many people think that they are in a race. Because of many false teachings, because of many false preachers, because of many false doctrines out there, people think that they're saved, people think that they're doing something for God, people think that they're in a race, however they're not. One of the common, common, very common, mistakenly thinking that you're saved is because you prayed a prayer. You repeat a prayer, you think you're saved. You prayed a sinner's prayer, you think that you're saved. Now, I was one of those person. I was in that you know, situation. I really didn't know what I was praying. I really didn't understand plan of salvation, right? God's plan of salvation. I was going to a you know, secular church. They were following Calvary Chapel method. It was mostly praise and worship. Say if we had a service for an hour, 50 minutes was praise and worship. Literally, there was a projector here, and then all you do is like wave your hand, you know, like feel like you're in a little mini concert every Sunday. And there is a message, and message is always the same. It's about Lord Jesus Christ, and since your flesh is so worked up, you pray after a prayer, and you get emotional, and you think you're saved. However, you know that you probably aren't saved, or you're 100% not sure, because after you pray, you go home during the week, and you live your life, and you don't have that assurance. You start committing sin, and you feel like, am I really saved? Can a saved person do what I'm doing? You start doubting salvation. 
It's all because you weren't shown the word of God. Verse by verse. How to get saved. It's so simple. Bible says in Romans, right? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. And I'm talking about this because you even start your personal race. You need to first get in the race. And in order to get in the race, you need to get saved. And you need to get truly saved. And you need to actually know for sure that you're saved. You know, that's what I'm telling you. Because last thing you want to do is you think you're running a race for the Lord. And you thought you finished the race when Lord comes back. Or, you know, you finished your life, and then you wake up, not at the rewarding zone where gold, silver, bronze ceremony, you're actually at the ceremony of burning in hell once and for all. If that becomes your reward, man, I think you'll be in for a shock. Then, if you know that you think you're saved because you repeated a prayer, if you're constantly doubting your salvation, then you must actually really check your salvation and you must really get saved and you must know for sure that where you're going after you die. If you know that you're a sinner on your way to hell, just like what Romans 3.10 and 3.23 said, then you know that you're going to die because you're a sinner. The Bible says in Romans 5.23, for the wages of sin is death. You and I know eventually we're going to die. Why? because we're born as a sinner. Because sin came into the world, you and I will eventually die. But you know that after we die, that's not end. Because Bible says in Revelation 21, 8, but the fearful and unbelieving, abominable murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars. Can anybody in this room or listening to this message online say that I'm not a liar? You're already lying. Everybody's a liar. And as sinners, just like Revelation 21 says, all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is a second death. Because you're a sinner, you're on your way to hell. But once again, what's the scarier part? Hell is made for devil and his angels. It wasn't originally made for you and me. Think about the Suffering, torture, eternal pain you have to go through once you're in hell. You can't take that chance. That's why when we witness to anybody, any soul out there, do you seriously want to take chance of burning in hell, even if it's one in a trillion, one in a billion, one in a gazillion? Because once you're in there, you can never get out. And think about the pain you'll suffer. Then if you realize that you're a sinner on your way to hell, and obviously the next question becomes, I mean, do you want to burn in hell for eternity? And majority of the people will say, no, I don't want to burn in hell. That's why Romans 5, uh, Romans 6, Romans 5 says, Romans 5, 8 says, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Okay? You and I were supposed to burn in hell, but Jesus Christ died for all your sins on the cross, shedding his precious blood. That's why the Bible says without shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. Your sins can be washed away through the precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, you're not here. You and I are not here to try to understand everything. You and I are here to believe what God says. That's what faith is. Believing in things that you can't see. Then if you believe that Jesus died for your sins, if you believe that his blood can wash all your sins, then what do you have to do? Again, everybody, almost everyone has heard of this. Because devil will let you hear it. However, devil will not, in most times, or hinder you, stop you from actually making the right decision and receiving Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior. Christ is in everyone's life. Whether you believe it or not, Christ is in everyone's life. However, Christ is not in everyone's heart. 
as their personal Savior and Lord. And that might be you. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10, 9 and 10. The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Same chapter, verse 13. And so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. Then in order for you to get saved, in order for you to know for sure that you're going to heaven, what do you have to do? You must realize you're a sinner and you're to hell. You must have willingness to turn from sin, which is repentance. You must believe that Jesus is God. And you must accept him in your heart as your personal Savior and Lord. Then Bible says you have eternal life. Simple as that. Not because you feel so, how should I say, emotional. Not because, you know, you feel so down. Not because you feel so up. Because you believe the word of God and what it says, you can get saved. Then final step is what? If you know that you're a sinner on your way to hell, you believe that Jesus is God who died for your sins, shedding his precious blood, you have willingness to turn from sins and turn to God, then you receive him in your heart, your Lord and Savior. The Bible says, but as man has received him, to then gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, in John 1, 12. Then, when you trust Jesus Christ, knowing all this in your heart as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says you have eternal life. The Bible says in 1 John 5, he that hath the Son has life. He that hath not the Son of God has not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. You know, 1 John 5, 12 and 13. You can know for sure. That's why when someone says, you won't know where you're going until you die, they're liars. They're making God liar out of his word. They're not studying the word of God. They're not rightly dividing the word of God. Then, if any of you listening, if you do not have assurance of salvation, if you do not know where you're going after you die, then you have to get it right in order to start the race. Think about it. If we're representing heaven, where our citizenship is, and you're running against other countries. After the race, they verify that you're from that country by checking your birth certificate. And he says, you're not from heaven. He says, you're from hell. Then you can't get the reward. Not only that, you'll be sent back to your own country. Imagine if that happens to you. So before that happens, you must get right you must recognize that you're a sinner on your way to hell with a repenting heart. You must accept Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior. The whole purpose of ministry is that people can get saved and grow in the Word of God and become a Bible believer, strong Bible believer. That's our purpose, right? So that we could lead as many people to the Lord and through teachings, through our conversation, so that others can grow in the Word of God. But in order for that race and everything to start, again, it must become your personal race. You must get saved, and you must personally trust and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I mean, if you could answer those two questions, or right? Have you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior without any doubt? Believing what the Bible says. Yes? Okay. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior? Yes? Then, whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not anymore, whether you feel good or bad, according to the Word of God, you're saved. Once and for all. Once saved, always saved. It's really disheartening to see when we receive you know, some of the questions you know, in our commentary, YouTube, or anywhere else where people are doubting their salvation. 
You, know, you didn't do anything. You're trusting in perfect work of Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible says, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You and I didn't do anything. It's just a gift that you received, which is, you know, God's gift of salvation. You don't have to give it back to God. It's a gift. Why? Not by works, lest any man should boast. That's why it's very dangerous that if you trust in your church attendance, your good works, your feelings, you know, speaking in tongues, which devil is giving to you, you know, then you're not trusting Jesus Christ alone to go to heaven. You think you go to heaven because you give charity, right? You give money to the church. Who are you trusting? You're trusting something other than Jesus Christ to go to heaven. Then you can't get saved. You could only get saved only if you trust Jesus Christ and Him alone as your Lord and Savior. That's why before we get on to the topic of race, right, running the race, you must get in the race. And you must become a, you know, you must really, really make it your personal race. Again, in order to do that, you must get saved. If you're listening or anybody here, you know, usually it happens at the end, but because of the message, we're going to make it happen in the beginning. Let's, you know, let's close our eyes, heads bowed. Again, for anybody listening, if you doubt your salvation, if you think that you're saved because you repeated a prayer after someone, you know, you need to just forget about it. Just realize that you are a sinner on your way to hell. Believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins. You have willingness to turn from sins and believe that He's God and His blood can wash away your sins. Then if you accept Christ in your heart as your personal Lord and Savior, you can get saved. If you want to get saved right now and know for sure that you're going to heaven, in this prayer, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and get saved from hell. Dear God, I am a sinner. Please forgive all my sins. I am willing to turn from sins. I believe Jesus is God. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for all my sins, shedding his precious blood. Right now, with all my heart, I receive Jesus Christ into my heart as my own personal Savior and Lord. I only trust precious blood of Jesus Christ to wash away all my sins. Thank you, Lord for dying for all my sins and coming into my heart as my Savior and Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Anyone at this moment, if you trusted Jesus Christ, knowing that you are a sinner on your way to hell, having willingness to turn from sins and receiving him in your heart as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says you have eternal life. Again, 1 John 5, 12 says, He that hath the Son has life. He that has not the Son of God has not life. Do you have Jesus Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior? Then Bible says you have eternal life. Do you think Bible will ever lie? You will lie. I will lie. But God will never lie. Then, because what the Bible says, I can confidently tell you that no matter what happens, I'm going to heaven. Of course, you know, next question always comes up. What about sin? I'm still going to commit sin, right? And this is where receiving and learning right doctrine will help you so much. When you trusted Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you're sealed with the Holy Ghost. When you trusted Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, spiritual circumcision happened. Your body and soul separated forever. That's why your body will continue to sin. You know, the thing that you see, this flesh, is very sinful and it's not perfect. It will continue to sin. However, it's not affecting the soul. It's separated forever. However, you don't have to worry about burning in hell. But now as a saved Christian... Whatever you do for the Lord, you will be judged. This is where the race comes in. 
Turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. You and I need to be cognizant in remembrance, constant reminder. We need to think about judgments of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. Verse 11, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Many of the, you know, translations, they change the word. Judgments that are Christ, the judgments that are God. So you all know the difference between judgments that are Christ and judgments that are God. And that's why it's very important also, after you get saved, you use the right Bible, which is King James Bible. Amen. And there's so many materials in our website you could study. You know, Pastor Jean, you know, Pastor Shrive. We have so many materials where you could see the evidence that King James Bible is the Word of God and other Bibles are devil's Bible. Then in this race, now you started this race. Now you're born again Christian. You will appear before judgment seat of Christ. What you have done for the Lord, whether it be good or bad. However, verse 11 says, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. You know, it's terror means, you know, downright frightening. Be afraid. Fearful. Then you think judgment seat of Christ will be a fun and games? You think judgment seat of Christ will be, uh, let's all, you know, party, you know, sing birthday songs? No. Knowing the terror of the Lord. You'll be judged for everything that you've ever done after you got saved, whether it be good or bad. Think about it. You and I, some of us started our race years and years ago. Maybe 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Some have started race today, or some have started race only a few months ago. But, Every single moment, every single second after you got saved, you'll be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. Think about it. That's a scary thought. Whether it be good or bad. Every single moment that you brought bad name to the Lord because of your selfishness, your sin, you'll be judged. Every good thing that you've done for the Lord, you'll be judged as well. But how many of you think that you have done more good than bad? How many of you think that you truly think that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in an okay state, you know? You're kidding yourself. That's why it is very important after you got saved that you examine yourself on a daily basis. In a race, everybody's given their own lane. If you go outside your lane, what happens? You, disqual you get disqualified, right? As you were put in your race, you're put in your lane in your Christian race. Have you been staying in your lane? If you haven't been focused on the Lord Jesus Christ, then you've been out of your lane. You're about to get disqualified. I mean, complete disqualification to me is just like what Romans 8, 13 says, if you live after the flesh, you shall die, you die, right? There's no good reason that you are here on earth if you're not going to glorify God, if you're not going to witness for Lord Jesus Christ. So it's better that Lord will just take you home, right? Just like Galatians chapter 6, you reap what you sow. Before that happens, you must realize that, am I in my lane, right? In order for that to happen, you have to be focused and you have to examine each time. As you're running, you are focused on your own lane. 
Many times, as Christians, you get into trouble because you're not focused. You start looking surroundings. You're looking at the world that's happening. You're looking at people that's happening around you. I mean, you're supposed to look at Lord Jesus Christ, author and finisher. Then, if you're not looking at Lord Jesus Christ, what happens? You start looking at other things, and then you start making detours, or you start getting out of the lane. Then what happens? It's going to take a long time for you to come back to the right lane. Imagine if you've been in the race for years, but you've been going backsliding you know, because of your sins. You're going the wrong way all these years. Do you think you could just jump back to the race? I wish. However, God is fair God and just God. So you have to pay for it. And that payment time is very, very, very uncomfortable. And it could be really, really hard. And then it's going to take some time for you to come back to your own lane and refocus and run the race. For some, that's definitely needed. You've been so away from your own lane that you forgot that you're even in a race. It's all easy come, easy go. You just live your life, you know, complacently, you know, don't care about the end, not looking at Lord Jesus Christ every single day. So what happens? Your life is a mess. You're completely backslidden. And especially for new Christians, you shouldn't get to that point. We will all eventually fall if you haven't already because we're human beings. However, when you are off course, you shouldn't let it be off course for too long. You got to come back right away. How are you going to do that? Then, just like 2 Corinthians 13, 5 says, you need to examine yourself. You got to check yourself on a daily basis. And you got to solve your sin problems on a daily basis. Like 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What does that mean? As you run race, you know, sometimes you're going to get injured. Sometimes you're going to get tired. Then what do you do? You refresh yourself. You drink water, right? You drink Gatorade, Powerade. You know, some people drink Monster. Some people drink, you know, five-hour energy. So, you know, you try to help yourself to run the race. But for you as Christian, you have to confess your sins and get right with the Lord. That's how it's going to keep you strengthened. Imagine each sin, it's like a cut on your body. And for some might have, you know, few cuts. But for some, you might have many, many cuts. How many people like paper cuts? And paper cuts is like one of the most, how should I say, annoying, hurtful things that could happen to you. I mean, you're just grabbing a piece of paper, and then, man, you see this red mark. And if it's deep enough, you see some blood start coming down. And whether you like it or not, and if you don't treat it, what happens? It hurts, right? Especially when there's, you know, blood. In your race, Christian race, if you don't confess your sins and examine yourself on a daily basis, you're going to bleed to death. You've got to remember that you're constantly bleeding because of your sin. And when you don't have blood, what happens? You can't continue. You can't survive. That's why in this race, you need to examine your life right now and see, am I running the race? like I should, or am I off course? Do I need to get right with the Lord? For many, you have to get right with the Lord. Even myself, you know, when I look at it, if I'm not careful, I get off the race very easily because of thing called flesh, because thing called world, because of thing called devil. Imagine at the judgment seat of Christ, instead of hearing, well done, thou good and faithful servant, and what have you done? And what have you done? Right? I mean, that's, you, you got to be like in the space, you know? You know, nothing to cover, 
yourself and the Lord's judging you, playing all your life's tape after you got saved, man, that would be a scary moment. However, it doesn't have to be if you get right with the Lord. You know, you could start running the right race again. It is very important that, you know, you solve your sin problem. That's why, you know, today, before day finishes, you should get on your knees and really pray to the Lord. Lord, I realized that, you know, life and the devil and the flesh and my selfishness and my complacency has caused me to veer off, get off track when it comes to my lane and running this race. Help me to really focus and look at you when I run this race. Help me to really remember all the injuries that I've caused to my body because of my sin. Because sometimes when you look at some injuries, right, if you have a lot of injuries, you don't know where it came from. Like, how did I get this? <laughs> I'm sure if you're working, you know, as a contractor or working with, you know, slabs or woodwork, even cooking, you know, especially when you're, you know, cutting vegetables, sometimes it just happens naturally. Or you're, you know, touching some hot things. You're like, oh, and then after everything's done, you look at yourself, hey, whatever happened to my hand? Where did this scar come from? Where did that come from? Sometimes you don't remember. But however, some of the deep scars will cause you pain. That's why you have to make sure to pray to the Lord. Lord, help me to remember the sins that I haven't confessed. Holy Spirit, help me. You know, we all want to be used by God. You want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You have to get right with the Lord. Once you turn your attention to the right lane and you're running, then what's going to happen eventually? You have a fruitful race. You're going to start bear some fruit. You know, if Lord's right there, your goal is to get to the Lord. And as you get closer and you know that you're accomplishing something, you're doing something right, then how are you going to get closer and closer, right? You look at your life and how much fruit you have in your life. Bible says in Proverbs 11.30, He that winneth souls is wise. Have you winning souls to the Lord? Right? We heard some testimonies from like Brother Calvin, right? And we know Pastor Shrive always witnesses. It doesn't have to be others. It has to be you. You need to be winning souls to the Lord. Because the Lord will provide you opportunity. When that opportunity comes, if you're right in the right lane, continuously running, then you're going to have some fruits. You pass out track. You talk to him about heaven. You talk to him about hell. You talk to him about Lord Jesus Christ. You talk to him about assurance of salvation. Then you're going to have some fruits. You want to have a fruitful race, right? When you're running the race, you want to see that, hey, I'm getting somewhere. Not because of me, because of Lord Jesus Christ. Because I'm focusing on Lord Jesus Christ. I'm running, running, I fall, I get up, I run, I run, I fall again, I get up. Then what happens? You finish the race well. Because at the end of the day, what you do for the Lord will be the only thing that will be worth it. All your material possessions, all your fame, all your whatever you know you think is important becomes nothing at the judgment seat of Christ if we weren't done for the Lord. That's why you and I have to constantly remind ourselves during this race, am I doing this for me or for the Lord? Because many times you forget about the Lord, you do it for yourself, and you fall. But it's a good thing. The Lord's reminding you, hey, 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 focus, focus. You're going the wrong way, focus. 
You're looking at yourself. You're looking at your friends. You're looking at money. You're looking at something else. Look at me. Focus, focus. For some, that's a blessing because they will focus and they'll go run the right race. But for some, it's more cursing. Why? They ignore and they fall into deeper trouble. And you don't want to be that person where you backslid in, where you're living in sin, and you're going downhill. Man, you know, one thing about Christian life or any, anything in life, when you're on downhill, it's really hard to stop. You're riding a skateboard, you're riding a bicycle, you're on downhill, especially like in San Francisco, how are you going to stop? It's gonna be very, very hard. So before your Christian life, before your life becomes such a mess where you're on a downhill, only way it's gonna stop you is if you hit something or if you flip over and then like, you know, you have to injure your shoulder, leg or anything, your head. Before that happens, you must realize, oh, man, I'm on a downhill. I'm on a wrong track. I need to get right with the Lord. You know, I, I've been looking at all the wrong things. I need to look on the Lord Jesus Christ, and I need to finish this race. I need to be focused. I need to be faithful, and I got to, you know, be fruitful as well. Then you will actually hear at the judgment seat of Christ, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Wouldn't you want to hear that from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Let's pray. Dear Father, first of all, thank you for saving us from hell through the precious blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We don't deserve it, but by your infinite grace and mercy, you have given us eternal life. And Father, I pray that we constantly be reminded and remember that we're in a race. Help us not stop running. Help us to continuously run. When we fall, Lord God, help us to get up and continuously run. Help us to focus our life, our heart, our minds to you, Lord. Help us to run the race looking unto you instead of everything else. And I pray that, Lord, you be with Pastor Shrive. I pray that all the procedures and processes will go fast and smoothly. I pray that you'll be with those who couldn't make it because of their physical ailments, Lord God. Heal them as soon as possible so that we could worship together, Lord. And I pray that you'll be with everyone in this room, Lord. If there's anything hindering us from running the race the right way, looking unto you, Lord, help us to break it, help us to break down, help us to confess our sins and get right with you, Lord, so that we could finish the race, run the race well, Lord. And number one thing, Lord God, please, even so come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.